Any questions on the treatment results study? Questions, comments? Okay. Oh. Austin Demi, HHS. Um, Todd, that was really impressive. I, I was just wondering, um, from methodology standpoint, if you did incorporate comments or input from other interested parties like the Global Fund and, and host countries around attributions, around the numbers. Uh, because I, I think as we go forward, it's going to be even more complicated as to who takes credit for a particular treatment. When one person buys the drugs, the other person trains the doctor, the other person provides the facility, and it's the same patient that you're dealing with. I, I was wondering what the reaction was by the other contributing parties. Great. Thanks for your question. Um, during our field work, we did meet with host country officials and, and talk to them about some of the challenges, you know, with m and &E systems. Um, and, and obviously this comes up. I mean, these are national treatment programs. Ultimately, if it's or PEPAR is supporting the treatment program in Zambia, this is a Zambian national program, right? So the, but the whole attribution thing still remains. It's not unique to the United States government. Everyone wants to sort of, you know, plant their flag a little bit. And so this is definitely a challenge. Um, and you're right, going forward, as you have more facilities, actually, that are receiving, you know, input and resources from, you know, various different places, Jane touched on this, Global Fund, partner country themselves, other donors, um, that becomes a big challenge. And that's why we really wanted, you know, to call on OGAC to, you know, think through about this notion of contribution. And it's one that they have, you know, been thinking about and have and maybe had some ideas proposed. Um, and this was how to help them along in that process to kind of move away from attribution as much as possible. You know, the reality is, is the Leadership Act has a requirement for reporting a number of people supported by PEPFAR on treatment. So OGEC will continue to interpret that and, and report on that as it, as it sees fit. Um, but this would be to help kind of move that conversation uh, forward. Hi, uh, Shannon Hader from Futures Group. Um, thank you for this. It's fantastic. Um, just wanted to ask a little bit of a question what your sense might be on one of the findings that you put forward, which is, even when there's data there, there's not a lot of evidence that dating, data is being used for decision making. Um, and um, I do, and we do a lot of data demand and data use kind of work. And invariably, at many levels, we often get the sense or the, the explicit response of, well, if you've got an M&E officer, why do you need a data use advisor? Aren't those just the same thing? In fact, I had a you know, an application debrief a week ago which had that as a verbatim, why would you ever need a data use officer? So I don't know what you found in terms of examining uh, quality improvement in data use and had any thoughts about what is or isn't happening structurally as ways to support that on the agenda as not just m and &E. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, and it's something that we kind of wrestled with a little bit as well. Um, we. In doing our analysis, a lot of the things that we looked at, um, as Todd mentioned, were the country and regional operational plans, um, and, and a, a number of different sources. And, and from what we understand, uh, you know, a number of the valuations um, also kind of echoed this idea of having a problem with um, data use and decision making. Um, and they listed several several reasons, several potential reasons for that. One of them being something you mentioned, human resource capacity. Um, either people aren't trained to use data and, and, and for decision making, uh, or they're not, um, or there simply just aren't the, the number of people required to do that kind of thing. Um, it's just not something that's on um, the top of the of a facility's agenda or a program's agenda um, to have people there to help them kind of take the data that they are collecting, that they are using, and analyze it and, and kind of kind of complete that cycle of, of that feedback cycle of then using it for decision making in other areas um, as well. Uh, thanks, Brian. I think that's a really good answer. And I think, you know, those, those are some of the key challenges that are laid out. I mean, there's, there was also one that's related, I think, and um, that's incentives for people to be, you know, to take data from a local facility and use it. And, and that's a big challenge. And some of the quality assurance um, activities and, the, and um, the quality improvement activities that we saw implemented by a lot of some of the partners in the countries we visited get at this. And so it's having, you know, maybe like a quality committee that meets regularly and facilitating that, that committee's activities. Um, 
So then, you know, then you get back to the question of, well, how do you report out on how quality is being improved, um, how data is being used, at, you know, at a greater level and a greater extent. And so these are the challenges that we, you know, we heard about in the field. Thanks for your question.